Hey everyone and welcome to today's tutorial where we are going to be creating a particle uh, advection effect. So this effect is something that you might want to, to do when you sort of want to have an effect when something is impacting something else. So in this case when these, this cosmetic bottle is hitting the, the ground, I want this sort of particle dust, uh, almost dust-like effect coming under beneath it and swirling up um, yeah just creating a nice kind of effect so and this is also something that we see a lot in x particles for cinema 4d and stuff uh, but we can do something similar in blender i don't think the particle system is that good in blender and that advanced compared to some some other settings but i wanted to show how it is possible with the native particle system in blender so the effect that we're going to be making is, as you can see over here, we have our final render over here. And um, the effect that we wanted, want to have is when this um, by, yeah, object here is hitting the plane, we have this sort of effect. And as you, also can, as you might also see is that we have um, something on the plane itself that is not going to be visible in our final render. It's just the actually the emitter for our particles. Um, so, and if I scroll in here, you might also start to notice that when this is happening, it might not come directly underneath it or for you guys look that realistic. Uh, I think it's actually quite nice for the effect that we want, but it's not the bottle or the ground itself that's making this effect as it would be in real life. It's actually this object down here, this ring object here. Um, but yeah, but uh, nevertheless, I think it's a cool effect and uh, I'll show you how to do it. So first of all, I think we'll, yeah, actually just hide this entire uh, collection here um, because I want to show you from scratch how to do it. So uh, my object was a round object, so I also, also wanted the affection to be in a round kind of uh, way. So I'll just add a circle here, and then I'm going to extrude it up a bit. And I'm actually going to scale it in and pull it down, just so we have this sort of effect here. And um, from here on, we can do a subdivision, uh, just apply it, so we have a a few subdivisions for our effect to to work and then we're actually going to be adding our particle system so as you can see here we have our particle system and uh, if i hit play you can see it starts to fall down um, just forever or until the timeline expire um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take down the end frame so that everything starts on the same time at the same place and then we can you know give it a yeah i think that the lifetime is we can we can look at that later but for now it's fine um the source we are not doing anything to this the catching the baking not yet um the next thing that's important is the velocity so it starts to have some sort of velocity to it we're going to turn this one off so when i hit play it just falls to gravity. Um, so we can actually also turn gravity off. So I'm going to turn gravity off here. And then when I hit play, you can see nothing happens because nothing is affecting the the, um, the particles. So under the viewport display, instead of rendered, I'm just going to be displaying it as point at this time. And I'm just going to be dining this one down a bit, just like this. So it might be easier to you, for you guys to see the, the kind of effect that we're going for. And then we will actually take a look at not the physics and not the rotation, but the velocity. So we kind of want it to spread out when, when, um, when it starts. So we can start to give it some velocity from the beginning. And as you might see, the, when, when I add, let's say 0 0.5, you can see that it falls down. We don't want it to fall down, but but we want it to fall kind of upwards and sidewards. So I'm setting this to a negative number. 
And when I do that, you can see that it's going up. Also over here, you can see it also. Um, it's a bit too much. I actually want to go more uh, sidewards. So I can also give this some sort of minus effect. So now you can see it's almost spreading out. Um, and you can see, if I go to this view here, you can see, and it's going down just a bit. We're going to change these things later and, you know, make sure that that everything looks nice. Uh, and I'm also going to show you the, the, uh, oh yeah, oh, the, um, the settings for, for the actual product that I had. So you might need to, to be doing some sort of tweaking with this thing here just to see how it will look. I think it needs to be almost the same actually as the other thing here. So now just going up a bit, um, but more to the side actually. So this is the kind of effect that we want out to the side in like a burst effect, but it's too uniform now. So I also want to randomize it, setting that to 0 0.1. And now you can see that they are acting more in a kind of random way. The, the velocity is more random, randomized for this one. So what can we, what can we do uh, to change, to make this even better? First of all, I think we need a bit, <laughs> a few more of these uh, points here, just to really highlight the effect. And now you can really start to see how it's coming alive, this effect here. But you can see it's still kind of uniform and everything is, is squashed together here. So what I want to add now is I actually want to add a, a, a force field and I'm going to be adding a turbulence force field. And uh, the strength of this, I will set to, let's set it to 0 0.5, give it some sort of starting size. And let's see what that does to the, our uh, objects here. Now you can see they're acting already more more nice and more spread out here. Hey, I think we could turn this one up here just to give it even more of this kind of cool effect here. And we might also just turn out the, uh, the flow here, which will make it go out fast and then slow down. And as you can see, that also creates quite a quite nice effect, almost like they stop and twirl around here. As you can see, and we also maybe might do it even higher. It's all about experimenting with the settings yourself. As you can see, now it starts to look even better over here. Um, so what can we else do? We can we can do something to make it more realistic. The lifetime randomness will we just turn that all the way up. It will make sure that they are not disappearing all at once, but just kind of like this. So this is a nice way to really make something that is even more realistic. And um, uh, let me just turn this one up to even more. And I think we can take the viewport even further down and say 0 0.005. And now I think we need to start to kind of bake this process just so that it runs more smoothly. And you can see here, now we really start to see the effect that I also had in my render, where we have this sort of effect bursting out and then kind of stopping and disappearing. I think we can tweak some things still. So under the turbulence settings, I will take the flow down quite a bit and I will Let's see, I like this one better. Let me just see it again. Yeah, just like this. And I actually also want this size. What happens if I take it one more notch up? Now it's almost like they're doing a bigger pattern. So maybe 0 0.05. Ah, you don't almost, you're not seeing anything. Okay. Just 0 0.1 for my 
my effect here. So now we have this setting here. And uh, yeah, I think it's starting to look quite nice. Um, we can also sort of, let's say, let's see, under the velocity, we can maybe bump this up even higher just to give it some sort of even more outburst. It's stopping because of the um, turbulence flow, uh, which is quite said quite high. But we can make the effect happening more strongly by taking the velocity up. So now you can see it's really like pumping up from the like this, almost like a speaker. And that's also something where you would actually be able to use this quite nice for like a, a sound effect, as you might also be be able to visualize from this effect here. So I actually think this is this is all for now. What I did for the settings, we can run them through now. So you will, because this is not looking exactly like like the thing that I did. What you also have to do is you have to under the render settings instead of render as Halo. We want it to render as an object, and then we can, for example, add a cube, and um, and we can sort of pick that cube as our um, instances here. So um, you can pick any object, but you would uh, you will have to know that all of these small things here, all the points, are calculating the objects that you are um, using so it will be quite hard for your pc to render anything specific uh, like a like any like if every every of these points were to be you know um, put out with a suicide head or something uh, your computer would go crazy i think so just keep it as a cube or a, something like that and you can then give that a color or whatever you want but let's go to the, um, but let's delete this scene for now and look at the, at the project that I have here. Um, let me just play through just like this so you can see it more clearly. Uh, these are also not showing up, uh, only showing up in the render settings and that's why you, um, you're not able to see it here. Um, also, um, when I had when I played here, um, so but I don't think that matter too much. You know how it's looking over here, and it will show up in your final render. So we can take our circle here and uh, take a look at the settings that I have. So uh, I actually took it down to twenty five thousand also here when I experimented, but for the final render, I actually set it up to if um, half a million particles so that's quite a lot um also i set it to start at the at this frame here when the bottle hit the plane um so it starts here and then it's just have a lifetime with also the the randomness here and then i baked it of course and the velocity settings uh, i set it to 0 0.75 and uh, gave the set axis uh, minus also to keep the particles down and then also randomized it a bit um as told before the object was a cube and uh, just scaled it here and i ticked off this one here uh, which is what's making the uh, emitter itself um, the, the circle uh, showing up in the render so so remember to to click this off it should not be turned on um, and then under just yeah under the fill wave the gravity was down just like we we did with the uh, with the other uh, and the other showing. Um, so yeah, so I actually think this is all of the settings, and I think the the reason why it works so well um, is because, as you can see over here, it's because I keep the. Um, the x-axis down as i think that's what's um, sold the uh, effect because it's it then looks like it's coming out beneath of, of this object but but if i as i'm going to show you here you can actually see also that that they they are in the object itself also uh which is 
not quite a good idea. Actually, I would. You're missing a lot of the the particle, as you can see here, because the the object is blocking. Um, but I don't think it matters for this effect here. If you don't want those in there, you probably should remove them. You can do as I did with this one here, add a collision to any of the object, and then under uh, the um, the physics properties here, you can just click this kill particles, and that will kill all of the the particle that's hitting the plane. Just it saves you some some render render time in the scene because the the computer is not calculating those particle uh, then. But yeah, I think this is um, this is the the effect, and uh, yeah, I think it turned out okay. It's not X particles, it's not in Houdini, uh, it's with the the Blender native particle system. But I I think I found a way to make this also realistic, and uh, just remember to up up those uh, point numbers to half a million or even a million, and then just bake it. It will give you even more detail when you're zoomed out and you can really start to see the kind of different uh, textures and, you know, patterns within the particles itself. So, um, yeah, this is something that can be used for a client project or something similar. Um, I actually used it um, for a cosmetic render I did for a client not long ago. And I also think I will be using it for some of the upcoming projects that I have. But yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The the render settings I used, um, the shading, uh, was done in Octane, and so not Cycles. So I've installed Octane on the uh, in this Blender version. Um, you know, Cycles is totally fine. Also, um, but to be honest, it's good to know more render engines, and especially the ones that are commercial ready. So, um, and I also think that Octane produces a, a nicer image than Cycles. Um, if you want tutorials on Octane within Blender and how to have this more professional um, pipeline with the render engines also, I, I can start to also do some tutorials on, on Octane, beginner tutorials on, on Octane for Blender users. Um, so, and it's free. Uh, with one GPU for for Blender users, so um, there is no excuse. <laughs> um, but I understand if you want to keep with cycles, and I will also keep playing around with cycles. I really like cycles, but damn, yeah, I love I love the Octane look. So, um, but yeah, thank you for all, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.